This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Every time I'm itch, I'm trying to touch a point. in a deeper way than the last time. People that are... It's a simple thing, it's not... I'm not unique in that. Every, everyone lives his life day after day, and every day we're learning something, and we're developing and improving. Trying to explain how you can see Hashem, the Creator, in your mind. Because Hashem is talking to us all of the time through our thoughts. And we don't need to do much to feel that closeness to Hashem. We don't. When people are teaching you that holiness is required, that you must fulfill certain obligations to be close to Hashem. By doing that, they're separating you from Him. Because your closeness to Him is in your mind, and if someone puts something into your mind that is separating between you and Him, so then you've been separated. But it depends in your mind. Let's say you have a best friend, and you are best friends. Everything is amazing between you. And then someone is coming and telling you, listen, you think he's your best friend, but you don't know. In reality, that person is a liar. He's cheating on you, he's talking about you behind your back, and check me. You think I'm lying to you? Go check. Even those words, they will be enough to create a separation between you two. Even if nothing was wrong between you, you were amazing, that word that you heard is enough to put something between you two. When you will see your best friend again, it won't be the same. Even if you're doubting that bad thing that you just heard, even if you know that you cannot count on that person that said those filthy things, even if you know that your friend is loyal, the fact that you heard that Lashon Ra, those bad things about that person, it's stuck. It's in. It's inside the system. Now you need to work on, for years. You need to work on yourself to uproot that the damage that's been caused to you. When people are coming to us and telling us that Hashem Barach is far away from us, and that Hashem is angry, and that Hashem is upset, and that Hashem is this, and Hashem is that. They're creating separation between us to Him. Because for us, really, Hashem Barach is here. Me as a child, and it's true, I'm talking about it all the time, because those are my memories. Hashem was with me as a child. I was not supposed to improve myself that Hashem will be there. Hashem was always there. Simple faith of a child, Hashem is there. He doesn't need to be a good kid. Only if his mother is going to tell him, now Hashem will punish you. Now Hashem will, I don't know what. So then you have a problem with Hashem. But really for you, Hashem is always there. In your simple, honest, sincere, innocent mindset, Hashem, the creator of the world, He loves me, I love Him, always. Even if you're falling, even if you're failing. And that's the truth. That's reality. Just the people misinterpret the messages of the Bible, the messages of Hashem. And people took those messages to their places. And I'm not saying that everyone were bad. Some of them made those mistakes out of their stress and out of their lack of knowledge and lack of understanding. But the damage been done, took place already. And there's nothing that we can do except of checking what reality really is inside my life. I never saw Hashem angry in my life. Now, I cannot tell you that 
I didn't see judgments out in the world. I see fire. You can see fire, bullets, bombs, people dying, sicknesses, illnesses, plagues, horrible, horrible things in the world. But really to connect it to the anger of Hashem, to see, oh, wow, now Hashem was angry. It will be my explanation. It will be someone else's explanation. I never saw that as a result Result of sin, punishment. I never saw it in my life. Me, myself, I never experienced it. In my 20 years of tshuva, from Hashem's side, I saw only kindness. I don't know, I'm not lying to you. I'm not trying to bribe you, to convince you to serve Hashem. It won't change my life if you will choose not to, or if you will. I want it for you because I believe in it. Not because I have a... Like, I'm, He's not paying me for this job. I'm doing it for free anyway. I never experienced those judgments. Now, I have judgments in my life as well. I'm also going through things. Here, I started my shiur one hour late. I, I, we're all going through difficulties. We're all going through challenges. We're all like, life, it's life. It's part of life. But to say that I saw in the supervision of Hashem that Hashem was punishing me on sins, on mistakes, on failures, I never saw that. But I saw many, many times that Hashem showed me the way, that Hashem educated me, that Hashem sent messages to me, messengers to deliver a certain kind of wisdom for development, for my growth process, for my wisdom to expand, to develop. For that Hashem taught me. For that Hashem used certain things to even rebuke me. Even to like to educate me in a strict way. But it was never punishment. So while you're being educated, being taught, you're not going to hate your teacher. Even if it's very heavy to learn that stuff. Even if what that he's trying to teach you is very hard and complex, you won't hate him. You won't be disappointed from him. Only if your thoughts are negative and based on negative thoughts of other people, you will have problems with your teacher. You'll have problems with the rebukes. You will feel that those are insultings. You will feel that those are judgments, that those are angers, that those are punishments. But the truth is that those are not. Those are not. The challenges that we're going through in our life is only the path that is bringing us to completion. To receive and to achieve something that is higher than physicality, than this world. The holiness and the purity that we can receive by nullifying ourselves to the divine will of Hashem in this world can take us to the heights, to places that human beings cannot take you. But for that, you need to find your inner connection to that supervisor, to that king that is teaching and that is sending those amazing, amazing messages to us 24-7. So for that, we need to listen to the voice of our hearts, to the voice of our thoughts, and to understand that the Creator will live His life inside of us and reflecting His goodness and His holy desire and will to influence good on us and to reveal His loving kindness on us from within. That's why we must focus in our thoughts and to listen to what that goes on in our life, in the inner world, in our inner existence, and not only in the outside world. Oh, what's going on with Trump? What's going on with the embassy in Jerusalem? What's going on with the Palestinians? What's going on? Oh, and people are talking. Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Mash that's nonsense. To think that because the, the normal value of the name Trump is equal to the normal value of I don't know how you write Mashiach and all those crazy combinations, this is junk. This is not faith. This is junk. This is not faith. This is junk. This is not faith. Faith is to check yourself. Am I counting on the Creator? Am I expecting Mashiach? Am I fulfilling my destiny? Am I doing my job? Am I taking care of all of the things that Hashem wants me to take care of? That's faith. 
start calculating and measuring and numbering and counting and, and, and waiting. I, I don't know what's that. It belongs, that, that is foreign cultures. This is not faith. Faith is in the, in the Creator. It's to live your life in the path of Hashem. To ask yourself, okay, Hashem, what do you want from me? Okay, what can I do for you, Hashem? Okay, Hashem, what do you want? Okay, Hashem, what's the message? Okay, Hashem, this is another morning, another day, another evening. Now I'm praying Mincha, amazing. Now I can pray Mincha. Oh, lunch, okay, I need to eat in purity and holiness. That's faith. Faith is when you live your life with the Creator. Now, when your mind is separated from the Creator, when your heart is separated from the Creator, so then you have a problem. Because you feel that separation, and you must cover for that bitterness, for that separation, in other things. So you want to learn Kabbalah, and you want to know the secrets, and you are upset on your wife that she doesn't let you go and learn, and you hate the fact that you have children because they're obligating you to other things, except of making fantasies and dreaming to be an angel, or I don't know what. And you're losing your mind and you become crazy because you're not close, bringing yourself close to the real Hashem, to reality. In reality, you can serve Hashem even if you're 12 years in prison like Yosef at Tzaddik. Yosef was happy in prison. Why can't you be happy in your prison? Okay, so you live your life in prison. You're a prisoner in your own house. But why can't you be like Yosef at Tzaddik? Why can't you dance? Why can't you be happy? Why was Yosef so happy? Why it's written on Yosef that he was a successful person in that time that he was in prison? Because the name of Hashem was always in his mouth. He was always praising Hashem. Not going like crazy, thank you Hashem, thank you Hashem, thank you Hashem. This is not a shita. This is not a real method also. It's also sickness and craziness. The verse is saying, if you're just praising the Creator with your lips, with your mouth, and your heart is far away from Him, so it's a shame. It's an insulting to Hashem. Just to say Hashem, yes, toda Hashem, toda, I'm saying thank you, thank you, thank you. What are you doing? You're lying. You are disappointed, and you're broken, and you're frustrated, and you're lost, and you're sad, and you're confused, and you don't know why is it happening to you, and you hate yourself, and you blame yourself, and you hate people, and you hate your rabbis, and you hate teachers, and you hate your family, and you hate Hashem. So how can you praise Him? Let's be honest, at least one hour a week when I'm teaching, and let's, let's be honest. When you hear my class, at least one hour, be honest. I cannot stand those lies. You think that Hashem wants you to lie? What do you think, that Hashem will be insulted if you will tell Hashem, Hashem, it's too much. I can't handle it. I don't know what to do. It's too much for me, Hashem. What do you think will happen to Hashem? What? Will he run away? Will he be so scared? He will punish you, maybe you think. No! He will cry with you on your sorrow. He will understand that you're upset. He will come and hug you. He will open for you the path to recovering, to complete recovering, because you said the truth. Because really, it's too much for you. It is. It's too much for you. It's too much. So why to lie and to act and to play? No, we're not talking about those things. No, I cannot. Uh, what do you mean you cannot? Why? If it's the truth that you don't know how to handle, that you don't know if, how to find advice, that you're lost and confused. So if that's the truth, on that you need to talk in your hit but do not. On that you need to discuss with the Creator while calling Him in times of struggle. What was King David screaming? What was he talking about? Hashem, I'm lost. Hashem, I'm confused. Hashem, you made me crazy. Hashem, they're shooting at me. Hashem, they're killing me. Hashem, they're about, I'm about to die. Hashem, I don't want it to happen. That was his heart. He just was brave enough to put it on the table. 
He was not scared to dissect his spirit to parts and to cut himself open and to discuss and to talk about everything with the Creator. He was the most honest person, so he was chosen to be Mashiach. Not because he was tall, not because he was handsome, and not because that he finished Shas before he was 13. He lived his life in a barn, in a pen. He raised his goats, he was a shepherd. He was day and night with his goats, with his animals, going alone to the fields and coming alone to cry, sleeping in a barn. That was his life. And he became Mashiach. Why became Mashiach? Because he was truthful and sensitive and honest and didn't give up on his faith. So he was calling Hashem and calling Hashem where from? From the valley of death, from the darkness, from the lowest place in hell. From those places, what do you think? How he was calling him? From the heart. He was screaming and he was crying. And some of his prayers been written and that's the book of Tehillim that we have. But actually, King David was praying thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of prayers all of his life. Every day he was spending hours and hours of simple conversation with the Creator. He was not saying Tehillim. King David was not saying Tehillim. He was saying his guts. He was pouring his eyes out. Like we need to do. From King David, you don't need to learn how to say Tehillim. Tehillim is supposed to inspire you to scream your guts out, to scream your heart out, to say to Hashem, like King David is saying, my heart is full of desires, and one day he can say, my heart is clean, and I love, I love you, and I don't want anything else. In your high days, in your amazing days, be inspired and inspired others, and in your low days, be honest and give strength to other people to, to not, not to give up. When he felt the heat of lust and desires, he was honest to say to Hashem, I'm crazy. And when he felt that he's clean, he asked Hashem, can it be? I'm righteous. Am I righteous? Am I chassid? I'm serving you, Hashem. He was committed to Hashem 24-7. And like that Hashem is telling us that we need to serve Him with both of the sides of our hearts. Bechol levavcha with your good inclination and with your evil inclination. You must serve Him. Means that it's allowed to have an evil inclination because really, can you cut your evil inclination? Can you separate it from your, yourself right now? Let's do it. We can't. It's too strong. He made out of clear fire. We cannot even recognize Him. We don't know how He grabbed us in the back. Every moment, suddenly, He's all over you, surrounding you, and you're already lost, already trapped in that web that He created around you. And you're done. And you're after the fact. You're after the sin. Now what can you do? You're after talking Lashon Ara. You're after eating something not properly. You're after sinning whatever that you, you messed up with. What can you do now? Tshuva. He gave you the solution. So what you should do? Tshuva. How you do tshuva? Tshuva is confessions. Tshuva is conversations with Hashem. Oh Hashem, I'm sorry. The truth is I don't know what to do. I messed up again, 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 again. And I don't know what to do about it, Hashem. It's too hard. And then suddenly Hashem will remind you that those verses are written in Without the help of Hashem, you cannot defeat your evil inclination. So why do you blame yourself on not defeating it? Why do you blame yourself on not winning and on not overpowering the evil inclination? If you're not able to, only if Hashem will help you, you will win. So if Hashem didn't help you until now, oh, we're not allowed to say that Hashem didn't help us? Hashem helped in some things, and in other things He didn't complete it yet. There are still things open. 
There was no complete redemption and we're the only ones that haven't heard about it yet, right? We're still in the exile. Hashem have not revealed all of His loving kindness completely yet. All of His grace and all of His power. Not yet. It didn't happen yet. It's on the way. Okay, so we're waiting. And it's hot. And it's cold. And it's dry. And it's wet. And it's boring. And it's too exciting sometimes. Okay, we're human beings. So as a human being, you need to learn how to serve Hashem Barach in reality. Reality is the truth. Now when you're down, the truth is to say to Hashem, I'm down. And to ask for Hashem Barach to lift you and to give you a hand and to support you. And that's honesty. That's dignity. That's the straight path. That's the right path. That's the most beautiful, honest path. Honest way of them all. When King David had been chosen to be Mashiach, when he was able to say, I was wrong. That was the moment that he had been chosen to be the fourth will of the Holy Chariot of Hashem. He became the head of the ancestors, higher than Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Only because he did tshuva on a sin, on a mistake. Now you don't want to talk about it, or the Orthodox community doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. Thank God we're not forcing no one to come to my classes. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. On Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev, everyone are saying he never sinned. Great, wonderful. The verse is saying, There is no righteous man that will do only good and will never going to sin. And King David said, I sinned. I made a mistake. Now we don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. That's his greatness. That even though that he was 99.9 .9 inside of Adat Hashem, he messed up once and he failed once. In a way, I don't know which way. I don't. I was. I wasn't there. I don't remember. It doesn't written. But the fact that he failed and he was able to admit in his failure, that was his greatness. That was his greatness. His greatness was not that he was able to say the name of Hashem and to fly in the air and to, and to, and to have his pure intentions of Kabbalah while doing I don't know what, learning, waking up Chatzot. That was not his greatness. This is why he was not chosen to become the fourth will of the Holy Chariot when he was the King of Israel. He'd been chosen when he was admitting in his failure, when he was down. When he was broken, when he was sad, when he was humble. Also us, the Jewish nation, we've been chosen and the Torah been given to us when? In the great days of King Solomon, in the wonderful temple? No! Not in days of wealth and not in days of health and not in days of happiness and joy. Only after that we came out naked, barefoot, broken and scratched, traumatized from Egypt after hundreds of years of exile and sorrow and pain and destruction, seeing 80% of our people dying and burying them in the darkness in front of our eyes with our bare hands. Only then, being so humbled, we've been chosen to be the holy nation. You need to understand that your humility is your blessing. Now to run away all of the time from our failures and to try to avoid them, it's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is that we will take responsibility on our failures and will be strong and brave, brave enough to admit and to make a business out of that and to make it the center of our lives. If you've been chosen by Hashem to walk in the path of a Baal Tshuva, of a person that needs to fix his mistakes, don't look for other ways. Don't think all day long how to be righteous, because it's not your path. Because if Hashem would want you to be righteous, Hashem knows how to create righteous people. He would bring you down in the generation of 2,500 years ago, 
תנאים, אמוראים, in the days of רבי שמעון בר יוחאי, in the days of רבי עקיבא, in the days of רבי נחוניה בן הקנה, he would bring you down in the days of the holy temple, first house, second house, in the days of מרדכי היהודי, of אסתר המלכה, instead, השם chose to bring you down to this generation, when Justin Bieber is running wild in the street half naked, and in those days you need to fix yourself. If Hashem would want to make you pure and holy and an angel, He knows how to make angels. He wouldn't send you to this lunatic family that He sent you, in that crazy neighborhood that He sent you, with horrible friends that were surrounding you from day first, crazy large screen TV in your house, computers all around, mobile, sickness, porn, and I don't know what, and now deal with it. You want to deal with it? So deal with it. Find what Hashem wants from you in reality. Not in your dreams. Not in your fantasies. It's not a, a, an option or to live in reality or to live in a fairy tale. No. There is no option. There is or to live life with truth means face reality, deal with reality. What does Hashem want from me with my wife, with my kids, with my house, with my health, with my reality, with my money, with my friends, with my career, with my well, whatever, with reality, tachles, bottom line. Or to dream. No. Why can't I learn? Why can't I daven? Why can't I be holy? Why my husband is not like this? Why, 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 why? Nothing. Fake thoughts. Choosing this outlet just to run away, escape land from reality. Oh, I wish I could be righteous. I wish I could be pure. It's not your job. Your job is not to be pure and holy and righteous. Your job is to deal with the scars and the pain and the wounds that you carry. To deal with the trauma, to deal with the patterns, to deal with the parents, to deal with the neighbors, to deal with a, with a dripping faucet. That's how you will be humbled. And that's how you will create that amazing, magnificent vessel to contain the Divine Spirit that will bring redemption even today. Because redemption will happen today, tomorrow, in the next day. Redemption is on the way. It will come. It will come in this lifetime. It will come in our reality. It is coming. Now, it will shine which generation? It will shine Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? No, he been shined already. He finished his story. You will be the one to receive the face of Mashiach. You, if you haven't seen him even, maybe you don't, maybe, maybe you don't know that you already seen him. Once there was a person that met a righteous man, that righteous man's name was Rabbi Yudha Zev Lebovich. And he asked Rabbi Yudha Zev Lebovich, that person, can, uh, can you bless me please to see Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet? He told him, you already saw him. He said, me? Are you sure? He said, yes, there is no Baal Tshuva that is waking up to do Tshuva unless he saw the face of Eliyahu Navi. So, you are a Baal Tshuva, on that you can say yes, yes, so you saw Eliyahu Navi. Now how and why didn't you know it? Different questions. But in reality, if you have been woke up to do tshuva, oh, suddenly felt that desire to serve. What's that? Where that came from? I was clubbing when I woke up to do tshuva. From that thick darkness, Hashem woke me up. I was driving with my bike to synagogues to keep Shabbat. I, I, did, I, 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 I can't tell you how fascinating and excited it was for me as a secular person, 20 years old, desiring to serve Hashem with, with a black tank top and, and, and leather sp spikes belt driving on my 500cc Kawasaki to Tzfat, to a synagogue, on Shabbat morning. After making barbecue all night in, in Galilee Sea, in Tveria, in the Kinneret. Now you cannot understand this, the craziness of that, but that's my life. That's how I've been woke up by Hashem. Now Hashem woke me up through those crazy experiences. 
send huge, massive amounts of light to my darkness, of my reality back then, and woke me up. Touched me with his magnet and pulled me out. So now, of course, after 20 years from that day, you look different. Of course you do. But you carry your scars and the same memories in your mind. And you remember all your bad and best friends from the past and all the experiences and every smell wakes a different memory and every song wakes up a different memory and you need to deal with reality. And even if I will learn Torah 24 hours a day and teach and preach, it won't help me not to be who that I am. It won't erase my memories. It won't erase my reality. My mother, the one that was my mother when I was 20, will be my mother when I'll be 60. In reality, you can serve only while connecting yourself to the truth. And when you start to deny the truth and to avoid the truth, you choose to walk in path of lies. Even if you want to live in an amazing Walt Disney fantasy movie, even if for you the future that you imagine is so bright and so pleasant, it's a fake reality. It's not the truth. Now, if you want to cre find the creator, if you want to connect yourself to the creator, you must connect yourself to the truth. Because Hashem Elokechem Emet, because your God is the God of truth. And a person that is lying cannot stand in front of Hashem. Dover shkarim lo ikon leneged enav. Cannot stand in front of Him while lying. When you're lying, kat shakarim enam mekabelet pene shechina. A group of liars cannot receive the face of heaven, the face of shechina. Face of God. Cannot. As long as you're lying to yourself, even faking dreams, faking hopes. Instead of dealing with reality, and reality is not the bitterness of our life. Reality is the truth. If you are a liar, if, you have, if you're a coward, if you have anxieties, if you're suffering from depression, those are the things that you need to deal with. This is the mission that you've been sent to take care of in this lifetime by Hashem. Now, maybe you don't like it, maybe you don't like Hashem for sending you to that mission, but if you'll check it, you're able to complete it. Because Hashem is not testing you in tests that are really higher than your height, that are too heavy for you to carry. Maybe you're not willing to, maybe you're not desiring to, maybe you're afraid, maybe you don't want to, okay. But it's not really that you cannot handle it, you can so do it and face the truth and believe in yourself that your greatness will be to deal with reality and to do your job. You don't need to be called Sarah, our mother, because you're not Sarah, our mother. You don't need to be called Harav Kanievsky because you're not Harav Kanievsky and you're never going to be and you don't need to. You know what? I'll tell you the truth. If Rabbi Kanievsky would stand in my footsteps, in my shoes, he wouldn't be able to handle my tests. I'm telling you that. Not because I'm greater than him. Because I have my life experience. I have my armor. I have my scars. I have my tools that I received to deal with crazy situations. And he never experienced that kind of craziness. He couldn't handle it. I once spoke with a Bial Rebbe, an Admor, a huge, righteous, honest, fantastic, righteous man. And I'm a very rude person. No, I'm gentle also, I'm nice, everything. But like when, when I'm fighting, I'm fighting all the way with respect. But I, ex one, few times, but one time that I'm going to mention today, I really exploded on him. I went out on him all the way. We sat and we're good friends. He called me his friend. I'm, we're friends. It's okay. And I really, like, I rebuked him big time. And I told him, you have your kingship. You have your throne of honor. You sit. And all day long you can learn Torah. And you have your students and you have your support, and you have your children that are surrounding you, and everything is like, 
I'm not saying that he, does, he doesn't have challenges. He does. Big ones. But I told him, you're sacrificing yourself while praying. You're sacrificing yourself while learning. But what will do a person that don't have that pure environment and company to support him? A person that cannot pray. A person that cannot learn. A person that cannot keep his holiness. How will he succeed in life? Now, when he, without learning, is throwing himself to Hashem, when he is trying to serve Hashem while not learning, while not praying, while not eating in purity, while not sleeping in purity, while not being able to deal with those holy things that are charging you, I think that he's greater than you. I think that that poor guy is even greater than you, even though that there is no one to, to dare to, to, to doubt your greatness. But if that poor person that doesn't have the ability to charge himself for a minute, and he's still throwing himself to the sea for Hashem, so he's greater than you, even though that you're a big, huge, righteous man. And he agreed with me. And there is no doubt about it. You don't need Admo to agree on that. It's simple math. It's reality. Once I remember I went to synagogue in Shabbat morning and I came very late. And every time I'm finding my excuses of why I'm coming late. But I came very late and another person came with me and he was also late. We both were late to the prayer. We came in the end of Musaf, almost like 15 minutes before the end of prayer. And you cannot catch up. You can, you, you can pray alone and, and to be thankful that you made it to synagogue. We, you, you're not part of that prayer in reality. And that person looked at me. Both of us, we came late. And he looked at me and he was sad. And he told me, until when... We're always going to come late until when we won't be part of that minyan. Why can't we come with everyone and pray? So I told him, listen, a car that the owner is filling gas and the car is driving, you're not going to make a big deal out of that car, right? It's okay. You filled gas and you're driving. Wonderful. But a car that doesn't have time to fill gas and still drives, that's an amazing car. That's an honest, awesome car, right? We're that car. We're still driving. And we're driving without filling gas. We're driving without learning. And we're driving without praying. And we're dri driving without mikveh. And without uman. And without tikkun klali every day. And without dafayomi. And without all the six hours it bodedut. And we're driving. And we're driving with our scars, with our tattoos, with our wounds, with our cracks, with our traumas, with our horrible, horrible memories. And we're driving, and we're carrying the wagon on our backs, and we keep on pulling them up the hill and down the hill, and sometimes it's rolling on our faces on, or on our backs, and sometimes it's driving fast, and you can feel the air in your face, and you're happy, and you have your ups and you have your downs, but you keep on marching to Zion, you keep on walking, and you're walking alone. You're walking with Hashem. You feel like an orphan. You feel like a widow. You feel like a neglected poor person, like a homeless. You walk, walk barefoot, like a beggar. And you knock on doors and you're being insulted again and again. And you try to learn and you don't understand. And you try to pray and you're not being answered. And you try to keep yourself holy and you find yourself losing it. And you try to wake up early and you find yourself wake up late. And you try to learn and you keep on forgetting. And you try to do good and you find yourself that you're ruining and destroying. It feels like judgments. It feels like Hashem is not accepting your prayers. But in reality, it's not punishments at all. This is the way that the Creator is building the vessels of humility inside of us, that we will hold the bounty of that Divine Spirit. And the Divine Spirit depends in the endless love of the Father to His children. 
Your success depends in His love to you, on you, not in your greatness. Your greatness depends in the nature of your creation, and He, the Creator, made you great already. You don't need no one to make you great again. You're great. Hashem made you great. Hashem made you fantastic. Hashem is the creator of the universe. He knows exactly how to create righteous and human beings. He knows how to create fragile and gentle souls. He knows how to make honest people. He knows how to bring people to certain places in life that they will receive a holy, pure heart. And He's looking on those hearts. And He's checking those hearts. And He's caring about those hearts, about those holy souls. And in a moment that will come so soon that we cannot imagine, suddenly He will call us all together like a fantastic bouquet and will take us to Jerusalem. And he won't have to go through the embassy. He will take us on the wings of eagles. We will see wonders that will be greater than the wonders that the ones that went out of Egypt experienced. The redemption will be greater than the first and second redemption. The third one will be greater than those two. The wonders and miracles that we will see will be impossible to imagine. For them, the sea being opened. For us, everything will open. There will be no control of nature anymore at all. No one will die. All of the prophecies will come true. In a second, in our lifetime, in this reality, into our reality, into our houses, into our front lawns and backyards, into our rooms and chambers, into our kitchens and beds. The redemption will come and will heal us all. Mashiach will come and knock on your door, will give you a hand. You will walk hand in hand with Him and you will see the face of Hashem. You will understand Hashem. You will become one with Hashem while being inside of a body. You will live forever in your eternal body. Physicality won't have no power on you anymore. You'll have the power to make wonders, to fly. To fly, everyone, not only King David. The Midrashim are saying that, those are the prophecies. All of the believers that were holding strong to believe in Hashem, they will receive the ability to fly and to learn Torah in heaven. And people that were not desiring Hashem when the redemption took place, they will look at those flying righteous ones and will ask them, where can I receive wings? Where can I receive that ability to fly as well? And you will know that it's not accessible anymore. And you will tell him, don't worry, I'll teach you. And you will deliver the message from heaven because you will be able to fly and to learn Torah from the mouth of Hashem and to come down to the world and to water thousands and millions of people with the pure water of Torah. Not that destroying Torah that is being taught in our generation by cruel people that are destroying and humiliating and breaking our spirits. You must do this and you cannot do that and why you did that and you don't know what's going to happen to you. This is not Torah. Those are speeches of the devil. Speeches of a rebuker, of a hater of an angry person that lets the anger and the fear control his actions and influence the negativity and sadness and judgments on his flock, on his people. This is not water of Torah. Water of Torah is olam chesed ibane, world of kindness, only love, only patience, only understanding, only sensitivity, only honor. Do you know what's honor? You know how much honor and appreciation and gratitude we must have to every person, to our wives, to our children, to our friends. How much love and appreciation. We're so self-centered. We must work so hard on ourselves. So hard. So hard. And that's our mission, to work on ourselves to focus on what we can fix and what we should fix, what we can do to benefit 
to become better, to be nicer to other people, to express the light of faith that is shining in our hearts, and not to hold it back never, ever from someone. Never to block the light of Hashem from no one. If you're angry on someone, you block the light of kindness. You, you just block the light of Hashem from Him. Might be forever, you don't know. You don't know what you caused with your anger. So go and relax. Put relaxing music in your mobile. Use that sick iPhone for good things. <laughs> relax yourself. Breathe. Meditate. Go back to that person. Apologize to him. Tell him, I'm sorry. I love you. I didn't mean to hurt you. I want you to be strong. But I'm going through my things and I went through so much pressure. And I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm apologizing. And that's it. Walk away. Go to your next step, to your next stage. And work over there as well. Eating and eating and eating and eating and filling yourself like a barrel. Stop. Now you feel that you ate too much. Great. Deal with it. Deal with reality. Hashem, I ate too much. Please help me to control myself, to control my desires. You know, I'm not able to. And there are good reason why you cannot. And it's great. Because you know that if you won't eat those sweets, you know that if you won't drink that coffee, you know about yourself what will happen to you if you're not going to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat like crazy. Yes, like crazy. You know that you can be much more dangerous to your beloved ones, right? So eat. Please eat. We're asking. We'll buy you food to relax you. It's okay. You're not alone in this craziness. You have your reasons why you chose sweets. To defend you from your sadness, from your traumas, from your horrible memories that are keep on bothering you and that's why you cannot go to sleep without your phone. And it's okay. You're not alone. You're not the only one that cannot go to sleep, that don't want to wake up in the mornings, that cannot focus in her prayer, that cannot focus in her raising your children, educating. You're not alone. You know why it's dark outside? Because Hashem turned off the light. Not because you're a dark person. You're not a dark person. You are a result of thousands of years of exile. You're a refugee. You are a miracle that you're alive at all. You are here because of the wonders of the supervision that brought you back to the light. Now you're filthy, right? Now you are scarred. Yes, you're wounded. Yes, you don't know the language. Yes, you're afraid. You're traumatized. Yes, but it's because that you went through a war. Because your ancestors suffered and been killed for nothing or for a reason. But the result is that you made it out from such horrible exile that you are a wonder in this world. That you are a blooming flower in a burnt field. So you look at yourself and you feel all alone and everything is dark and everything is black and everything is filthy and everything is burnt. But you are now the sign of blooming, of a new spring, of a new morning, of an amazing power of awakeness that, that, that shows and proves the fact that Hashem lives inside of us because you woke up from within. You're the face of Hashem in this generation. No matter which face you have, no matter which weaknesses you have, you are a true angel of Hashem. And only because that you are you. With the scars, with the weaknesses, with the lackings, with the difficulties, with the challenges, with kids, with no money, with no education, with no knowledge, with no patience, with fears, with crazy angers. What do you want from yourself? If you will connect yourself to reality, you will understand yourself. You have your reasons why you're afraid of people. You have your reasons why you're afraid of relationships. You have your reason why you're terrified about money. You have your reasons why you're terrified about health. You have your reasons why you don't know how to educate yourself and your family. And you don't know how to communicate. You have your reasons for everything that is blocking and closing you. And you know it. 
but you're not willing to give yourself the credit for it, that it's reality. What do you want from me? What do you want from yourself? How can you blame yourself on things that took place in your life? Someone screamed your head off your shoulders and it's not your fault. And now you cannot speak anymore in public. And now you cannot develop relationships with an open heart. Now you're ashamed of yourself even when you're dressed with a fancy suit. What do you want from yourself? You've been destroyed for years. By parents that been destroyed for years, by parents that been destroyed for years, by parents that been destroyed for generations. Now how come in the world you blame yourself? For what? For trying? For what? For being honest? For giving yourself a chance? For apologizing? For trying to be honest? Oh, but I failed again. So you failed. So what? Who could prevent that? Why do you think that you could have prevented that? Why? Why? How come? Based on what? If Hashem doesn't help the person, the person cannot defeat his evil inclination. Hashem didn't help you when you failed. Hashem let you fall in that moment. And I don't care what other people will say. I know the truth and I'm learning that truth from my life experience. And the wiser a person cannot be wise unless he's counting on his life experience. I saw in my 20 years of learning how Hashem educated me and based on what Hashem taught me things. And I saw how that learning brought results not only to my life, also to the life of other people, that Hashem gives me the merit and the power to touch and change their lives as well. To give them a hand, to give them an evidence that the light that is shining in their souls is the light of truth. I'm just a mirror for you to show you that what that you understand is already eternal and reach out to you. It's not you also. It's Hashem. Because there is nothing except of Him. Now He chose me to reflect yourself to you. What do you see in the mirror when you see? You see yourself. If I will start now talking about concepts that you never heard of, you won't understand me, right? People will walk out in the middle of the lecture. Why? Don't know what he's talking about. But you know what I talk about, right? Where, where from? Because you heard another lecture of mine? No, you felt related and connected to the first one you saw already. Wow, that rabbi. Why? Because you found yourself in my speech. You found yourself in my words, in my character, in my honesty, in the fact that I'm sharing from my life experience. You find yourself, not me. You don't find me. You don't know me. We never met even. You just saw yourself through me in a mirror. And what that you saw, the good that you saw inside of yourself, it's not even yourself, it's Hashem. It's the light of the Creator that lives inside of you and screaming to you, Find me! Find me! Know me! Recognize me! I'm here! I'm with you! I love you! That's Hashem! That is Hashem that is calling you from within. The verse is saying, Lecha amar libi bakshu panai tamid. Your heart is the messenger of the Creator to tell you, look for me always. Hashem is using your heart to tell you all the time, look for me, look for Hashem. Our mission is only to work on our awareness to know Hashem always, to listen to our thoughts, to be aware to His existence to his being to his spirit in our emotions in our feelings when you feel that you eat too much when you feel that you do something wrong when you feel that you're talking too much when you feel that you're driving not in a careful way when you feel feel don't ignore 
When you felt something, don't ignore it. Listen to it. Are you chasing yourself for no reason? Or maybe you're awake and your senses are calling you to understand something about yourself. And now don't ignore those inner voices. And listen to the voice of Hashem that is talking to you from within. There is a clearer mirror and there is a darker mirror. From the Bible, from the verses, from the righteous man, man, people, you can learn maybe more. Maybe they reflect the light of heaven in a clearer way to you. Great. But you can also learn from horror, filthy movies of Hollywood how Hashem works in His world. Because if that is the right mirror for you right now, you will learn from it. So maybe you want to learn from clearer sources of information. Great. But you should learn always. And if you're in a dark place in your life, if you're in a broken place in your life, it doesn't mean that you cannot grow, that you cannot learn, that you cannot develop and succeed. Because when you will learn in the darkness, so the light of your soul will shine to your surroundings and then you will understand why you had to go through that darkness. To shine and to recognize other people that are trapped over there and you would become to be their savior, give them a hand while climbing up and they will learn from you and will give a hand to their surroundings and one circle will carry the next and here you have a complete redemption. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.